And our uh, next speaker, Richard Luarki from the Pueblo of Laguna. He has previously served as the governor and the first lieutenant governor for the tribe. Prior to serving in the role of lieutenant governor, Governor Luarki has been a small business owner and has a passion for supporting entrepreneurs and economic development. Governor Luarki has a Bachelor of Arts in Economics from the University of New Mexico, a Master's of Business Administration from New Mexico State University, with a concentration in strategy and business development. Please a warm welcome for Richard Luarki. The world has fallen. The world, or the, world, the sky has fallen, the world is ending. That's words that always bring fear, that bring, bring, make people scared, that always bring visions of negativity. But you know, in this very day and age, the world ends every day. We see marriages happen. We see children leave the home and you have new empty nesters. You see someone pass on. The world ends. We even see, in a comical way, young children, their world ends when they don't make their bed. <laughs> better look out for mom. So, you know, I want us to be thinking about, as, we, as I go through the balance of the time I have this afternoon or this evening, to be thinking about three main things that we have to create our new future. We have an extraordinary spirit. We have principle. And we have a new day. Those are going to be the three things that I want to touch on as I go through my talk today. Extraordinary spirit. Working together, collectiveness, all as one people, not as Laguna or as you know, Chickasaw or as Navajo or as whatever tribe, but as native people. Take our labels off. As a collective, we can make the extraordinary ordinary. The challenge we run into today, today is that we see and we allow others to define us. We allow others to create our identity. When we write a grant proposal to any funding agency, we have to tell them how bad off we are. The worse off, the better chance of funding. I was at a conference a few years ago, as a matter of fact, an NCAI conference, and I heard a tribal leader, nationally renowned tribal leader speaking, and he said, we have to be like all the, like the other minorities. We have to be like the African American. We have to be like the Asian. We have to be like the Hispanic. All these, when the minorities come together, these minority groups, they work as one and they get what they want. We have to be like that. And I'm sitting there going like this. And people are saying, well, Governor, why are you disagreeing? You're always talking about working together. So I'm not in opposition to working together. What, am I, what, what I'm in opposition to is we're not a minority. We, have, we can set our own taxes. We have our own land base. We can set our own laws. We have our own people. We have place. We're not a minority. We're a nation. And we need to behave as such. But in order to do that, it takes work. Any more now, we spend more time for 15 minutes of fame as opposed to spending time for a lifetime of meaning and purpose. We need to focus on the meaning and purpose. That's what our tzapapats and nanakiyemashe, our grandparents, worked for. That's what they did for us. Principle. There was a time, when actually when I served as the lieutenant governor, we were going through, our tribe was going through negotiations with a public service company in New Mexico. And I was, I was very engaged in the negotiations for the lease of their, their, 
the, the lines that were going to be running across our tribal lands. And we were coming up to a point of, of, of maybe um, where we might not be able to move forward. And one individual on the, on the public service company team was, was, was very frustrating. And it takes a lot to get me frustrated. I, I, I think I'm a pretty patient guy. But for some reason, it, it was just eating at me. And so we were, we were getting ready for this meeting. And so that, that morning, before I, every morning before I lay, leave my house and until this very day, I take my cornmeal out. I go pray. I greet the sun. This morning, I, was, I was, got in the shower. And that day, I was already feeling, starting to bubble inside. Like, oh, man, we're going to get this guy. And I'm, I'm just going to tell him. Showered up, got my cornmeal, I went outside, faced the east, and started my prayer. And all of a sudden, I felt a tap on my head. It went like that. And on the east side of our house, there's trees. A bird crapped on my head. <laughs> so, so here I am with the most profound gift we can give the creator, a cornmeal, and crap. It was a bunch, too. <laughs> so I'm standing there thinking, well, all right, of course, my humanity, I got mad. But here I am in the middle of a prayer. So I had to make a choice. Do I let anger shape my day? Or do I let principle? So I had to stop and laugh and make my heart light. Because if I didn't, that day could have been hard. And I finished my prayer and asked for that guidance and that strength. And lo and behold, the day came out OK. It was light. Our work was OK. And so I, I share that piece because I think that when we go through this process, like the lady here, the design, we can design the outcome. But it has to be designed with principle and heart. It has to be designed with the goodness that we all have. Our creators already bestowed us with that ability. So the other thing is that in principle, in working with our principles, it's also very important to not focus on filling in the lines. Instead, work from the inside out. That's a much more sustainable, a much more profound design that you're going to end up with. Don't be afraid to work from the inside out. That is going to be one of the most significant contributors to our future. A new day. We always hear, what is the future going to look like? What, it, what, it, what do you think our, 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 our economy is going to be like? What do you think our communities are going to be like? Where are you going to be in 20 years? But you know, and I'm sure all of you are the same as I. In our native way, we're always taught we only have one day. Our creator only gives us one day. And it's not our choice as to whether or not we wake up tomorrow morning. That's the creator's choice. Medicine, technology has deepened that arrogant perception. And I'm not bucking medicine or technology. It's great. But at the end of the day, no matter how great the medicine or technology, if the creator wants us home, that's her authority. And so I think, you know, as we, as we, as we look at going forward, we have to make sure that we take care of today. If we take care of today, tomorrow will take care of itself. We have to create history. 
but it has to be intentional, has to be conscious history that we create. Because there are times we unconsciously compound those things that we're critical of. The example, blood quantum. We're so very critical, but it's in many of the tribe's policies and constitutions and whatever the case may be. And we keep it there and we protect it. It's not even ours. But that informs our future. So we need to make, for, make sure that we are intentional in what we do today because that is going to become the precedent for tomorrow. Amuch onus, love one another. Doesn't mean go hand out flowers every day, but be compassionate. Have a good heart. Also have the courage to tell somebody when we might be out of line. Many of you might have grown up like me as well. Didn't matter where I was at growing, running around in the village. Whoever caught me, they got after me. Got spanked, took me home, got spanked again. But you know what? They also said, well, I love you. And here's why. Be respectful of one another. You know, we talk about sovereignty, we talk about economic development, we talk about policy, we talk about all these things, revenue generation. But you know what? The things that we have, the ability to get along, to work together, those are the most precious things. It doesn't take money, it doesn't take policy, it doesn't take law, it takes each other. But that's so hard to do sometimes, to just say, how are you? Or to wait for that answer. I always tell my kids, don't just ask somebody, how are you? You better wait for that answer. Because you never know that person might need your ear. Be mindful. That's a very important question. And so when I say take care of today, I also mean, like the portrait here, our mothers, our wives, our grandmothers, our daughters. My grandmother always, my grandparents raised me. My grandmother always said, you need to go get your education. You need to go make yourself useful. Because one of these days, you're going to find that person you love, that you want to be with for the rest of your life. When that happens, Kunuyu, you're no longer number one. She becomes number one even before the children. So us as males, that's our responsibility to take care of today. Our mothers, our wives, our daughters. Because if we can do that, the little ones, tomorrow will take care of itself. If we teach them right, how to behave, how to conduct themselves, because I'm into you, it's saying to conduct yourself properly. If we teach them that, that's the best, that's all we can do. Because they're going to make their own decisions no matter how, how much you talk to them, how, you know, you can talk through the blue in the face, but they're going to make their decisions. As long as they know the difference between right and wrong, we've done our job. So, so those are going to be very critical elements in helping to shape our future. And, and like the quote says, we're at, we can't be afraid to step outside our comfort zone. We can't be afraid. We're inherent with courage. We're inherent with strength. And that comes from that very thing we should do every day have our pouch and go pray. And it doesn't have to just be once a day. It could just be sitting right where you're at. The creators can hear you. It's very simple. And so as I conclude my presentation, so how do we get to our future? What does that look like? 
I've mentioned the three key things, and, and by no means is it all encompassing. But in my mind, those are three very important things. The extraordinary spirit, principle, and our new day. Those are all very critical. Within that, we also have to acknowledge that all the work that every one of you in this room do, all those that are here, those that are at home, keeping the home fires burning, maybe that never have the opportunity to come to an event like this, they're the ones home doing laundry or cooking or watching the kids or whatever the case may be, everybody has value. Everybody's work is, is necessary, is precious, is absolute. That applies to the individual. Every one of you is precious, is necessary, and absolute. Let's not forget that. Let's get out and away from the deficit thinking to abundance. In our language, many of you may be in your own languages, what's ironic is here we are in this war on poverty, right? We're all, we all identify our communities as impoverished. But what, what's interesting, in our language, we don't even have a word for poverty. We can describe it, but we don't have a word for it. That tells me that's not our source. That's not where we come from. But we have many words for may you see abundance, may you see more. We come from abundance, not from deficit. And we need to shift that. We need to shift back to that. That is going to inform our future. And so as we think about how we move forward, Again, the world ends every day. The sky falls every day. But we have the same opportunity every day for a new path to a new beginning. But it starts not with you, it starts within you. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight, our abundance is the power of stories. Please, again, for everybody at the panel. As we end, I just want to say a quick word about the title, uh, Indian Talk Talks. Um, it, it would be easy to look at that and think of it as uh, another way of doing TED Talks, where people get on a stage and do something like that. But it occurred to me, as folks were talking, that the power of oratory is a 10,000-year tradition, and technology didn't change anything. So thank you. I think we all saw it tonight. Thank you for being here.